ओके गुड इवनिंग बच्चों सो एम आई विजिबल आई कैन सी दैट येस आई एम विजिबल बट एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू ऑल great chalo so if i am uh, audible also then in that case let's start the important topic which i told you that we are going to start and that is antepartum hemorrhage uh, the basics of placenta previa now before i go into ki what are the basics of placenta previa first thing which you need to know is what is antepartum hemorrhage so please remember any bleeding which is occurring from the genital tract or any bleeding which is occurring into the genital tract right beyond the period of gestation and period of gestation in india is taken as 28 weeks so any bleeding which is happening at more than equal to 28 weeks of pregnancy and it is happening until the delivery of the placenta right so any bleeding beyond 28 weeks of pregnancy and up till the delivery of placenta that is what is called as antepartum hemorrhage a very important single liner question is that what is the most common cause of antepartum hemorrhage please remember that the most common cause of antepartum hemorrhage is abruptio placenta right what is the second most common cause of antepartum hemorrhage second most common cause is placenta previa don't say it the other way round most common cause is abruptio placenta good evening to all of you right now other cause which you have to know is vasa previa vasa previa can also lead to antepartum hemorrhage right so these are the uh, causes other than that a circumvallate placenta also can lead to antepartum hemorrhage right what is a circumvallate placenta i'll tell you when we are doing important images okay so these are all the causes of antepartum hemorrhage in which the most common being abruptio second most common being placenta previa in other causes you have to remember vasa previa and you have to remember circumvallate placenta right okay now now jab bhi question aayega on antepartum hemorrhage and your question says that there is a patient who has come to you with bleeding at or more than 28 weeks so most of the times aapko na batate nahi hai in your questions they are not going to tell you ki ye placenta previa ka patient hai ya ye abruptio ka hai ya ye vasa previa ka hai from the history of the patient from the presentation of the patient right from the examination findings you have to come to a conclusion कि आप प्लेसेंटा प्रिविया से डील कर रहे हो कि आप रपशियो से डील कर रहे हो एंड दीज आर द टाइप्स ऑफ क्वेश्चंस व्हिच आर बीइंग रिपीटेडली आस्ड दीज डेज राइट सो अगर आपके पास पेशेंट ब्लीडिंग के साथ आ रही है एंड देयर इज नो पेन इन अब्डोमेन सो पेशेंट इज कमिंग टू यू विद ब्लीडिंग एंड देयर इज नो पेन इन अब्डोमेन ब्लीडिंग का कलर अगर दिया होगा तो इट विल बी गिवन एज ब्राइट रेड इन कलर राइट एंड ये जो ब्लीडिंग होगी ये कॉजलेस होगी मतलब कॉजलेस का मतलब देर इज नो रीजन फॉर ब्लीडिंग मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स पेशेंट इज गोइंग टू से वो सो रही थी शी वॉज स्लीपिंग वेन शी स्टार्टेड हैविंग पेन राइट वेन शी स्टार्टेड हैविंग ब्लीडिंग देन नंबर टू ब्लीडिंग इज गोइंग टू बी रिकरेंट रिकरेंट का क्या मतलब हुआ रिकरेंट का मतलब ये हुआ कि पेशेंट हिस्ट्री देगी दैट थ्री डेज बैक भी उसको ब्लीडिंग हुई थी देन द ब्लीडिंग स्टॉप एंड आज फिर से ब्लीडिंग हो रही है तो इस तरीके की हिस्ट्री की इनिशियली पेशेंट हैड ब्लीडिंग देन द ब्लीडिंग स्टॉप एंड अगेन शी इज हैविंग ब्लीडिंग दिस इज द काइंड ऑफ हिस्ट्री विच यू गेट इन केस ऑफ प्लेसेंटा प्रिविया थर्ड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग third very important symptom which you get is warning hemorrhage 
कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ ब्लीडिंग इज वार्निंग हेमरेज इज देयर वॉट डू यू मीन बाई वार्निंग वार्निंग मीन्स पहले से कोई हमें वॉर्न कर रहा है सेम थिंग इन हैपन्स इन पेशेंट्स विद प्लासेंटा प्रिविया इन पेशेंट्स ऑफ प्लासेंटा प्रिविया देर इज इनिशियली लेस ब्लीडिंग Initially, there will be less bleeding, and this will be followed by heavy bleeding. And ये जो initially less bleeding होती है, उसको कहते हैं warning hemorrhage, right? So if your question is saying that patient को bleeding हो रही थी, but there was no pain in abdomen, ऐसी history दे रहा है patient कि doctor अब three days back I had bleeding and again फिर bleeding stop हो गई थी, and now again the bleeding has started. राइट एंड जो थ्री डेज बैक ब्लीडिंग हुई थी दैट वॉज लेस इन अमाउंट बट नाउ द ब्लीडिंग इज वेरी हैवी दिस मीन्स दैट यू आर डीलिंग विद केस ऑफ प्लेसेंटा प्रिविया राइट ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ योर पेशेंट इज कंप्लेनिंग ऑफ ब्लीडिंग एंड अलोंग विद ब्लीडिंग देर इज पेन इन अबडोमिन पेन इन अबडोमिन इज प्रेजेंट राइट ब्लीडिंग का कलर इज डार्क रेड राइट right? एंड आपका क्वेश्चन कह रहा है दैट देर इज अ रीजन फॉर ब्लीडिंग दैट रीजन कुड बी कि देर इज हिस्ट्री ऑफ ट्रॉमा तो क्वेश्चन कह रहा है कि पेशेंट का कार एक्सीडेंट हुआ या शी वॉज शी फेल डाउन और शी वॉज हिट बाय समवन राइट या इफ देर इज हिस्ट्री ऑफ पी आई एच पेशेंट हैज हिस्ट्री ऑफ हाई बीपी राइट देन दिस मीन्स दैट वी आर दिस रेज द सस्पेशन ऑफ एब्रप्शियो प्लेसेंटा Number two, in case of abruptio, bleeding is never recurrent. What do you understand by this term? The bleeding is never recurrent. इसका मतलब ये होता है कि जब भी abruptio होता है, abruptio means when I'll do abruptio, I'll tell you that abruptio का मतलब होता है that the placenta has started separating before the delivery of the baby. राइट एंड जब भी प्लेसेंटा स्टार्ट सेपरेटिंग बिफोर द डिलीवरी ऑफ द बेबी ये प्लेसेंटा पूरा का पूरा सेपरेट होता है एंड पेशेंट गोज इन टू लेबर तो कभी भी ऐसी हिस्ट्री नहीं मिलेगी कि तीन दिन पहले ब्लीडिंग हुई थी देन द ब्लीडिंग स्टॉप एंड अगेन आई एम हैविंग ब्लीडिंग एक बार ब्लीडिंग स्टार्ट हुई इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ एब्रप्शियो प्लेसेंटा इट एंड इन डिलीवरी राइट सो यू नेवर गेट अ हिस्ट्री दैट फोर डेज बैक आई वॉज हैविंग bleeding and then the bleeding stopped and now again i am having bleeding this kind of history you never get in a patient of abruptio there is no warning hemorrhage right so if you are getting this kind of history you should suspect abruptio if you were getting pehle wali history you should suspect placenta previa not only this on per abdominal examination also in case of placenta previa you will have different kind of findings in case of abruptio you will have different kind of findings in case of pla placenta previa on per abdominal examination uterus is soft it is non tender right uterus is soft it is non tender fetal heart sounds are easily heard right and uh, height of the uterus is equal to period of gestation right whereas in case of abruptio in case of abruptio on per abdominal examination uterus is tensed it is tender it is rigid राइट एंड जब यूट्रस टेंस्ड होगा टेंडर होगा रिजिड होगा सो कॉमन सेंस टेल्स मी दैट फीटल हार्ट साउंड आर नॉट इजिली हर्ड राइट एंड हाइट ऑफ द यूट्रस इज मोर देन द पीरियड ऑफ जेस्टेशन इन केस ऑफ एब्रप्शी राइट सो दीज आर द फाइंडिंग्स पर अबडोमिनल फाइंडिंग्स विच टेल यू दैट यू आर डीलिंग विद एब्रप्शी now what happens in vasa previa in vasa previa in vasa previa there is velamentous insertion of cord there is velamentous insertion of cord ab what is this velamentous insertion of cord so suppose suppose this over here is the 
abdomen, mother's abdomen. This is the uterus. These are fetal membranes. Fetal membranes कौन सी होती हैं? Amnion and chorion. अंदर वाली amnion, बाहर वाली chorion. This over here is placenta, right? And this is the fetus. This over here is amniotic fluid. And suppose the cord of the baby is first attached to the membranes. and then it it goes and attaches to the placenta like this to so cord is attached to the membranes first to so ab batao if the cord is attached to the membranes jab bhi membranes rupture hongi the cord is going to get ruptured right so when the membranes rupture the cord ruptures and all of us know that cord has got umbilical artery umbilical vein right so the vessel the fetal blood vessels get damaged fetal blood vessels are damaged and this leads to fetal blood loss right this leads to fetal blood loss placenta previa mein mother ka blood loss ho raha tha in case of vasa previa it is the fetus who will lose blood to In placenta previa will lead to maternal mortality. Vasa previa is going to lead to fetal mortality. In other words, perinatal mortality. मतलब it is going to lead to the baby की mortality होगी. इसमें mother को कुछ नहीं होगा in case of vasa previa. लेकिन because ये blood mother की vagina से निकलेगा, so obviously we are going to include it in antepartum hemorrhage. So in case of Vasa previa, you will see that pa patient question ये कहेगा कि patient को bleeding बहुत कम हो रही थी, right? The patient was having less bleeding, but the fetal distress is more. Fetal distress is more. There is no pain in abdomen. मदर को कोई पेन वेन नहीं होगा राइट सो देर इज लेस ब्लीडिंग देर इज नो पेन इन अपडोमिन बिकॉज देर इज नो पेन इन अपडोमिन दैट इज वाई इसकी डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस क्या होती है प्लेसेंटा प्रिविया राइट तो पेशेंट को बहुत कम ब्लीडिंग हुई एंड पेन नहीं हुआ अपडोमिन में लेकिन इस लेस ब्लीडिंग के कंपेरिजन में जो फीटल डिस्ट्रेस हुआ वो बहुत ज्यादा हुआ In comparison to placenta previa, placenta previa may you get very less fetal distress, right? जब बहुत ज़्यादा bleeding होगी तब fetal distress होगा in case of placenta previa. But in case of vasa previa, bleeding कम होगी लेकिन question ये बताएगा कि there is fetal distress. तो अगर ऐसी कुछ history मिल रही है, then it means you are dealing with vasa previa. Yeah. नंबर टू अगर आपका क्वेश्चन कह रहा है कि फीटल डिस्ट्रेस अकर्स आफ्टर द रपचर ऑफ मेम्ब्रेन्स तो वंस देर वॉज अ क्वेश्चन विच हैड कम विच सेड दैट योर पेशेंट इज इन लेबर शी इज एट 36 सिक्स वीक्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी शी इज इन लेबर एंड लेबर वॉज प्रोग्रेसिंग नॉर्मली उसके बाद वेन द मेम्ब्रेन्स वर रपच्चर शी हैड ब्लीडिंग and there was a lot of fetal distress immediately after rupture of membranes and her ultrasound was normal ultrasound normal ka matlab placenta previa nahi hai and kyunki question is saying ki membranes rupture hui and then you are getting fetal distress that means it is a case of vasa previa please remember this point very very Uh, this is a very important point that if bleeding is happening after the rupture of membranes it means you are dealing with vasa previa and bleeding less hogi fetal distress bahut jyada hoga in placenta previa bahut jyada bleeding hogi tab fetal distress milega vasa previa mein less bleeding hogi lekin fetal distress bahut jyada hoga kyunki this blood belongs to the fetus right clear to all of you so on the basis of history and per abdominal examination findings we can come to know whether we are dealing with placenta previa abruptio or vasa previa now quickly let us talk about placenta previa where is the placenta located in case of placenta previa it is located in 
lower uterine segment where is the placenta located it is located in lower uterine segment now ek older classification hai placenta previa ka and now there is a new classification for placenta previa you have to know both of them according to new classification if the edge of the placenta if the edge of placenta it lies within 2 cm of the os but doesn't touch it that means it is a low lying placenta लो लाइन प्लेसेंटा का क्या मतलब हो गया दैट मीन्स एज ऑफ द प्लेसेंटा इट लाइज विद इन टू सेंटीमीटर्स ऑफ द ऑस बट इट डजेंट टच इट इफ द प्लेसेंटा टचेज द इंटरनल ऑस इफ द प्लेसेंटा टचेज द इंटरनल ऑस और कवर्स इट राइट देन दैट इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज प्लेसेंटा प्रिपिया so there are only two terms used these days one is placenta previa and the other is low lying placenta right older classification ke according jo aapka low lying placenta tha that was type 1 placenta previa low lying was type 1 placenta previa it was also called as lateral placenta previa lateral placenta previa then if the placenta touches the internal os but doesn't cover it if the placenta touches the internal os or reaches up till the margins of internal os right so it reaches up till the margins of internal os but doesn't cover it right then that is what is called as type 2 placenta previa type 2 placenta previa ko marginal placenta previa bhi kehte hain right then we have the third type of placenta where the placenta covers the internal os partially so placenta covers the internal os partially this is what is incomplete placenta previa incomplete placenta previa this is also called as type 3 placenta previa and if the placenta covers the internal os completely right so placenta is covering the internal os completely then that is what is type 4 placenta previa which is also called as a complete placenta previa or central placenta previa right so this classification is very very important for all of you next very important one liner which i want all of you to remember is these are not important points nowadays inki koi significance nahi hai but agar koi purana question aa jaye so you should know this stall worthy sign stall worthy sign is seen in posterior variety of placenta previa stall worthy sign is seen in posterior varieties of placenta previa right now in patients in whom placenta is in lower uterine segment in first trimester t1 is first trimester in 90% cases in third trimester placenta migrates up and it reaches the upper uterine segment right 90% cases mein jab aap repeat ultrasound karoge in third trimester placenta will migrate up and it will reach the upper uterine segment so i'm writing just migrates properly so that uh, you don't confuse what have i written so this is migrates so placenta migrates to the upper uterine segment 
so now placenta is in upper uterine segment in 90% cases in 10% cases in third trimester placenta remains in lower uterine segment and ye 10% cases are placenta previa ke patients in these cases placenta previa is confirmed right ye jo 90% cases hain jisme placenta migrate kar jata hai wo placenta previa nahi rehta hai that in them the placenta becomes comes in the upper uterine segment 10% cases mein in third trimester placenta remains in u, uh, lower uterine segment and that is how placenta previa is confirmed only 10% cases mein so if i ask you what is the best time to do ultrasound to diagnose placenta previa what is the best time to do ultrasound best time to do ultrasound is third trimester 32 weeks pe karte hain and then 36 weeks pe karte hain now this is please very very important in many of your questions jo antepartum hemorrhage ke aate hain question tells you ki 32 weeks pe ultrasound hua and everything was normal so 32 weeks pe ultrasound hua and everything is normal and patient has come to you with bleeding can she ever be a case of placenta previa no क्योंकि अगर 32 वीक्स पे नॉर्मल है तो दैट मींस शी इज नॉट अ केस ऑफ प्लेसेंटा प्रिविया 32 वीक्स पे अगर लोअर यूट्राइन सेगमेंट में दिख रहा है प्लेसेंटा देन ओनली शी इज अ केस ऑफ प्लेसेंटा प्रिविया इज दैट क्लियर टू यू सो रीड योर क्वेश्चंस वेरी केयरफुली मेनी मेनी टाइम्स दे से कि 32 वीक्स पे अल्ट्रासाउंड किया एंड अल्ट्रासाउंड वाज नॉर्मल दैट मींस Your patient is not a case of placenta previa. ऐसा कभी भी नहीं होगा कि 32 weeks पे placenta upper uterine segment में दिख रहा है and then 36 weeks पे फिर नीचे आ जाए ऐसा नहीं होता This never happens, right? Okay. What is the screening ultrasound for placenta previa? So screening ultrasound for placenta previa is trans abdominal ultrasound. सो so, कभी भी अगर आपका क्वेश्चन आएगा दैट देर इज अ केस ऑफ एंटी पार्टम हेमरेज राइट एंड पेशेंट के वाइटल्स स्टेबल हैं और क्वेश्चन में ना पता नहीं लग रहा है कि ये एब्रप्शियो का पेशेंट है कि प्लेसेंटा प्रिविया का पेशेंट है कोई अल्ट्रासाउंड मेंशन नहीं किया कुछ नहीं किया दे हैव सिंपली गिवन यू दैट देर इज अ केस ऑफ एंटी पार्टम हेमरेज जिसके वाइटल स्टेबल हैं एंड दे आर आस्किंग यू व्हाट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप सो द नेक्स्ट स्टेप बिकम्स टोटल अब्डोमिनल अल्ट्रासाउंड बिकॉज दैट इज अ स्क्रीनिंग अल्ट्रासाउंड टोटल अब्डोमिनल अल्ट्रासाउंड करके देखेंगे अब्डोमिनल अल्ट्रासाउंड करके देखेंगे टोटल अब्डोमिनल अल्ट्रासाउंड नहीं कहते दिस इज ट्रांस अब्डोमिनल अल्ट्रासाउंड ट्रांस अब्डोमिनल सोनोग्राफी सॉरी इट इज नॉट टोटल अब्डोमिनल अल्ट्रासाउंड इट्स ट्रांस अब्डोमिनल सोनोग्राफी सो वेन यू आर डू वेन यू हैव हैव अ पेशेंट ऑफ एंटी पार्टम हेमरेज एंड द वाइटल्स ऑफ योर पेशेंट आर स्टेबल एंड दे आस्क यू वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज ट्रांस अब्डोमिनल सोनोग्राफी right don't directly go to the investigation of choice you have to start from screening ultrasound the investigation of choice for placenta previa is tbs very very important that per vaginal examination and per speculum examination are contra indicated in placenta previa patients but the investigation of choice is tbs clear to all of you yes but please remember the screening ultrasound is total abdominal sono trans abdominal sonography right th say i'm just now i was teaching someone uh, cancer cervix so okay so trans abdominal sonography right okay now ble now comes a few important things which we've already done but i want you to remember again bleeding in placenta previa is described as bleeding is described as painless causeless recurrent bleeding painless causeless recurrent bleeding and it a it warning hemorrhage is present painless causeless recurrent bleeding where warning hemorrhage is present clear okay 
on per abdominal examination what do you get on per abdominal examination you are going to get uterus is soft uterus is non tender right uh, height of the uterus is equal to the period of gestation fetal heart sounds are normal and they are easily heard fetal parts are easily uh, felt fetal parts are easily felt right now complication of placenta previa is mal presentations mal presentations are common in placenta previa most common being transverse lie followed by breach the most common mal presentation is transverse lie common sense tells me ki agar uterus aisa hai and placenta is in the lower part of the uterus like this in case of placenta previa तो ऑब्वियसली मैक्सिमम स्पेस बचता है लाइक दिस सो द मोस्ट कॉमन माल प्रेजेंटेशन विच यू गेट इज ट्रांसफर्स लाइफ फॉलोड बाय ब्रिच राइट व्हाट इज नॉट अ कॉम्प्लिकेशन डीआईसी डीआईसी इज अ कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ एब्रप्शियो इट इज नॉट अ कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ प्लासेंटा प्रिविया राइट देन are you going to do a per vaginal examination are you going to do after per abdominal examination will you do a per vaginal examination no per vaginal examination is contraindicated per speculum examination is contraindicated what are you going to do first you are the investigations which you are going to do first you are going to do first you will do a trans abdominal scan and then it will be followed by tvs which is the investigation of choice right so this is the basic which i wanted to tell you about placenta previa management of placenta previa the chota packet class will happen tomorrow and i will deal with you the management of placenta previa but placenta previa and abruptio are very very important one another thing which is very important in case of placenta previa is the risk factors for placenta previa risk factors for placenta previa now remember puri obs mein there are four conditions jiske risk factors pe direct questions aate hain placenta previa abruptio then postpartum hemorrhage you get direct questions and you get direct questions placenta accreta ke bhi risk factors pe and pih right placenta accreta ki do hi hai so that is why i don't count it in those four conditions so pih placenta previa abruptio and pph direct questions are asked from risk factors similarly gynae mein risk factors mein cancer cervix ke risk factors are important endometrial cancer ke risk factors are very very important right so uh, these days they have also started asking risk factors for uh, vulval cancers right so risk factors for placenta previa mein teen categories yaad rakh li hai number 1 if there is history of previous placenta previa so if there is history previous history of placenta previa that is that has got maximum risk maximum risk right then if there is a big placenta if there is a big placenta right whenever there is a big placenta a part of the placenta can also be situated in the lower uterine segment तो बिग प्लासेंटा कब मिलता है सपोज देर इज सकिन चूरिएट लोब राइट या ट्विन प्रेगनेंसी यू आर गोइंग टू गेट बिग प्लासेंटा राइट और इफ देर आर इफ देर इज एनी थिंग एनी फैक्टर विच प्रिवेंट्स माइग्रेशन of the placenta so i was telling you in 90% cases placenta upar chala jayega so anything which is stopping the migration of the placenta and what is that anything that anything could be additions 
for example if there is previous history of cesarean section or if there is previous history of dilatation and curettage if there is previous history of myomectomy or if your patient is a smoker why a smoker because jab wo smoke karega it is going to lead to endometritis endometritis so endometritis in itself is also a risk factor right then please remember increased maternal age and increased maternal parity which means ki placenta previa is more common in multi parous females on the other hand i want all of you to remember pih is more common in primary gravida so pih is more common in primary gravida whereas uh, your placenta previa is more common in multi parous female similarly abruptio in other words jitne bhi anti partum hemorrhage ke patients hote hain anti partum hemorrhage is more common in multi parous females clear to all of you yes so uh, i hope all of you have understood uh priyesh nagar yes a uh, marrow rapid revision is enough as uh, that's not a rapid revision basically that's revision and revision is enough for fmg right then uh five accelerations are seen for 15 seconds on three obviously if you are getting two or more than two accelerations uh gopi kishore if you are getting two or more than two accelerations in a period of 20 minutes that means that nst is reactive uh then comes uh, nursing officer aims norset ke liye crash course kab launch hoga it will be launched uh, very soon very soon it will be launched uh dk ma'am are you coming to mumbai in dbmci in july it's not in july it's in august beta uh, yes it's in august and i am coming to mumbai uh then any other question related to academics any other question which you have okay so this is what you had to remember uh in uh placenta previa that's all for today so see you tomorrow with the management of placenta previa take care all the best keep studying